Hola amigos. Today you get weekend, Katie. With no makeup and no hairdo, it is what it is. Um, I mentioned in my last video that I just started a new job, which is super awesome and I'm really enjoying it, but I'm super tired. <laughs> so right before I started um, over Labor Day weekend, I started working on a bonnet to go with my Nanke riding habit. Um, and I will put up uh, either a shot of the fashion plate that I'm copying copying here on the screen or a link in the description or something but anyway it's uh I decided it's going to be black silk because that's what I can get around here and I initially was thinking oh this could be a one day bank and then over Labor Day weekend my husband and I also built a base for our kitchen table and I was getting ready to start a new job and we had all sorts of stuff going on so it was not a one day bank but this is what I got done in one day. So <laughs> this is what a one day make looks like for me. Um, my friend Sela helped me over video come up with a pattern for the crown, uh, not the crown, the brim. That's what this is. This is a brim. Uh, it's based on the Timely Tresses Julia bonnet pattern because I somehow had three Timely Tresses patterns, just the pattern pieces, cut out, ready to use, no instructions and I have no memory of buying them. So I have one Civil War bonnet pattern and two Regency bonnet patterns. I don't remember purchasing them and I don't have any instructions to go with them. But Timely Tresses is one of my favorite vendors and you should check out their patterns and actually purchase them if they don't spontaneously breed in your sewing room like they apparently do in mine. Um, and I, I trust her shapes and draftsmanship. So I figured that was a good starting point. And I used the Julia bonnet as my base and ended up making the brim a little bit bigger to kind of match what the, uh, the fashion plate showed. But otherwise, this is basically just the Julia brim made deeper. So the curve is the same on both edges. It's just got more space kind of spliced into the middle. And it's basically exactly what I wanted. So it's a really great, this was like a 1799-1800 plate, um, but you could dress it up to be any of the, the early Regency styles. So A+, plus, go see Danielle's work. It's awesome. Very highly recommend. Um, and so I videoed making all of that. I'll show that coming up in this video. Um, but I got the brim all done. It's all... Um, two, it's two layers of buckram, millinery wire on each edge, and then black silk taffeta on the top and bottom. And you can see the inside isn't perfectly smooth, but you're not really going to see that when it's on my head. So I'm not too worried. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's not perfect, but considering that I swore off making bonnets back in like 2013 and haven't made one since, I'm pretty happy with it. So the next step is the crown. And I have a circle cut out straight from the pattern and I interlined it with four layers, two or four, four layers of this nylon net tool that I had left over from making a wedding veil for my best friend Elizabeth who got married, um, kind of got married in quarantine and then they had a ceremony and got married again with the big white dress and fancy stuff a little bit later. And I was very blessed and privileged to have been asked to do all the alterations on her wedding dress. And I made her a veil kind of last minute. We didn't have a chance to talk about it too much beforehand. Um, she needed it within like two weeks. So I took her ideas and made something up and she wore it at the ceremony and it was gorgeous. So, um, I bought a lot of extra net though, because I was really worried that I was gonna mess it up. And it went fine on the first try, so I have a couple yards of nylon net lying around. Um, so I figured that would help give body and crispness to the taffeta, because it's kind of a thin taffeta. I got it at our friendly local craft, not craft, friendly local fabric store, Fields, which I love. Um, it's a local chain to the West Michigan area, but they also do online shopping and you can call them for your needs. So if you want to support a independent type business and not the evil empire of, you know, 
the big three craft and, and hobby stores in the area here are Joanne Hobby Lobby and Michael's. Um, and as we know, at least one of those stores engages in questionable ethic, mm -hmm. questionably ethical practices in terms of their acquiring of antiquities of questionable provenance, let's say. Y you know what I mean. Anyway, thin taffeta, nylon net. I also have silk organza lying around, but it was in the basement and I'm tired. So this was already upstairs, so that's what I used. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure around the part of my head where the crown and brim are going to join and cut myself a strip of taffeta and pleat the circle down into the correct circumference and basically bind the edge with the strip of taffeta. And then I'm just gonna whip stitch them together along the crown edge of the brim. And then I'm gonna put a couple of ties for under the chin and a little bow on the side because I think that's what I see in the in the fashion plate. It's hard to tell because it's all black, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm at. I'll film some of it, but some of it's going to be real boring with me just pleating things down and hand sewing them. So I'll take some footage and we'll include the stuff that's interesting to watch. And you get to see me make a bonnet for the first time in at least seven years, <laughs> maybe more. So, enjoy! Alright, so first I get all my supplies together. I've got the Timely Tresses Julia pattern with the modified brim. I'm using Pellon Heavy Duty Buckram, Millinery Wire, Batting, and Silk. The buckram isn't very sturdy, so I cut out two layers of my brim. Um, I use paper scissors for this because it's not very heavy buckram, but it will chew up your fabric scissors. And I already have at least one pair that needs sharpening, so I might as well save myself the grief of losing all of them in one fell swoop and use paper scissors just to make sure I don't ruin anything. Then I mark the center, and I'm gonna pin this together accounting for what's called turn of the cloth. The brim here is flat, but I want it to be curved in the end. So in order to keep the underside from buckling when I curve it down, I'm going to baste it together by machine with the curve pinned in so that it will hold that shape. And you can see as I'm pinning it, it kind of already is accepting that curve around the, the center point. Obviously you can do this by hand, but I just ran it through the machine with plain old white cotton thread. Uh, not a big deal. It's all going to get really, really well covered in the end. So just make sure you don't sew over any pins and everything should be fine. As you can see, I'm kind of keeping it curved as I sew it. And that's also going to help hold all the layers in place where I want them and make sure that it accepts that curve and keeps it throughout the lifetime of the bonnet. In some of the shots here, you can see that the buckram is buckling a little bit. It's really not great buckram, but it was what Joanne had in my town, so it's what I went with. Uh, Timely Tresses sells buckram, and if I had wanted to wait for the mail, I would have ordered from them. All right, now it's time for millinery wire, which I happen to have on hand. Uh, but again, Timely Tresses sells it, and I'm recommending them because their materials are good, their patterns are good, and they're lovely people. So 
I put this on with binder clips because pinning isn't really going to work. And then I zigzagged it down to both edges of the brim. Not shown is going to be the part where I took like three stitches and then sewed right into the wire and broke my needle. I told Rich not to include that footage because, you know, it was boring. But it's also good to note that that's what's going to happen. So if you're worried about it, wear protective eye coverings. A lot of people have fancy little sewing clips, but these were just lying around my house, so I figured why not use them. This was challenging to film, so I'm sorry about the focus issues and the fact that sometimes you can't really see what's happening. But I'm zigzagging over the wire with uh, the largest stitch on my machine. While the basting with the turn of the cloth is going to help keep the curve of the fabric, the millinery wire really stabilizes everything because without it, the buckram is very floppy. So I put it on both edges and that's going to help it maintain whatever shape I set it into. Then I added batting. Uh, this is called mulling for millinery. And I went the modern route and used spray tacky glue to keep it on. You can do it by hand basting, but... I was really trying to just get this done and use materials that I had on hand. And, well, let's be honest. I was trying to avoid hand sewing. All right, so then for the silk layer, I cut out the layers a little bit bigger than what I needed. Um, accounting for turn of the cloth kind of shrinks one side and expands the other side. So I just made sure to give myself a lot of seam allowance. And then I laid the top of the brim the layer that goes over the top, the larger curve, over the mulling and clipped it on, basted it in by hand, and then I turned the seam allowances under on the underside, the shorter curve of the brim that goes next to the face, and I stitched it all together with a fell stitch around the edges. I will put a link in the description to the blog post I made about the fell stitch, which is one of my favorite stitches that I use consistently over all my sewing, be it modern or period of any type. Um, I did a post about it many, many years ago, back when blogging was the social media du jour for customers. And here I am measuring, like I said in the intro, for my crown. I decided I wanted the finished band around the crown to be about one inch wide, so I cut it a little wider to account for seam allowances, made it into the right length, sewed it into a tube, and pleated my crown down with the netting inside, which gave it a lot of nice body. I hope you enjoy my eclectic collection of graphic shirts and sweatshirts because that's probably how my sewing is going to be this entire winter. I filmed a bunch of this and then the camera stopped working and I also realized that sewing black silk with black silk thread without a macro lens probably wasn't going to show you a whole lot so I didn't sweat it too much but basically it was just a lot of handwork. I could have done it by machine but there was so much that would have need to be done by hand that I didn't bother re-threading it and it ended up going pretty quickly. All right so I marked the for cardinal points, if you will, of the crown and the binding. And then I matched them up and just kept dividing the sections in half and then in half again and then in half again until they became small enough that they would make nice pleats. And then I laid the pleats down so that they point away from the center front and toward the center back. So in some of these shots, you can kind of see how it forms like these little waves between the pins. Each one of those waves became a pleat. And they didn't turn out perfectly, but frankly, it doesn't matter because particularly once it's on your head, no one's going to see all of it at the same time. So as long as it looks fairly symmetrical from the front and from the side, that's really all you need. 
Yes. This is me giving you, you're giving you permission to not be a perfectionist. Perfect is the enemy of done. And I wanted this to be done. All right. So here she is. Put it all in there. I think overall my brim is a little deeper than in the fashion plate, but I also have a lot of hair that is going to take up horizontal space inside the crown. So I think it'll work out pretty well. Um, this, I'm pretty happy with the side by side that I put in my thumbnail. So pretty excited. Yep. She needs a little, little bow and then some ties, but I haven't decided if I want to get some black silk ribbon and do that, uh, or like try and sew tubes of the taffeta. Um, I think ribbon would be nice just because it'll lie nicer for the ties and stuff like that. So I have to shop around for some of that, but there we go. She's done. I'm pretty excited. Hope you liked it. Adios. As always, you can find